Confidence Intervals, a quiz to help develop your understanding. Hi, I'm Dr Nick from Creative Maths, including Statistics Learning Centre. This video builds on our very popular video, Understanding Confidence Intervals, and other videos about confidence intervals. This video is a series of true-false questions to help you develop your understanding of confidence intervals. In each question there will be a statement. Pause the video and think, and if you are in a class or a group, discuss your answer. Decide if the statement is true or false. Start the video again and check if you are correct. Listen to the explanation. Sometimes I will put a link to a video answer. And here we go. Question 1. Sampling. Because the sample is only a selection of objects from the population, it will never be a perfect representation of the population. Pause the video to think of whether this is true or false and discuss it. Answer. True. Sampling is like that. A sample can be the best representation we can get, but it will not be a perfect representation of the population. Question 2. Sampling error. When you use a poor sampling method, you increase sampling error. Answer. False. There will always be sampling error. This is because the sample is only a subset of the population. A poor sampling method will increase bias or non-sampling error. Question 3. Purpose of confidence intervals. When we express an estimate of a population parameter, such as a mean or a median, it is good practice to give it as a confidence interval. Answer. True. Confidence intervals help us to communicate how exact our estimate is. Question 4. Role of confidence intervals. We use a confidence interval to express the range in which we are pretty sure the population parameter lies. Answer. True. That is the purpose of the confidence interval. It is constructed from information gathered in the sample. Question 5. Role of confidence intervals. We know that the population parameter is somewhere within the confidence interval. Answer. False. We cannot be sure that the population parameter is within the confidence interval. That is why it is called a confidence interval and not a certainty interval. Question 6. Role of confidence intervals. Sometimes the confidence interval will not include the population parameter. Answer. True. Mostly an appropriate confidence interval will contain the population parameter, but sometimes a confidence interval will not contain the population parameter, and we do not know whether our confidence interval does or does not contain the population parameter. Question 7. Sample size and confidence interval width. A larger sample size leads to a narrower confidence interval. True. A larger sample leads to a smaller confidence interval. You have more information so you can reduce the size of your confidence interval. Question 8. Variation and confidence interval width. A more varied population will lead to a narrower confidence interval. False. Increased variation within the population leads to a larger confidence interval. If a population has low variation, then a narrower confidence interval is possible. Question 9. Confidence interval width. The more confident you wish to be, the wider the confidence interval will be. True. In classical confidence intervals, the level of confidence affects the width of the confidence interval. If you think about a confidence interval as a net, the more confident you want to be of catching a fish, the bigger the net will be. Question 10. Stating a confidence interval. A 95% confidence interval is calculated to be 4.5 to 4.8. It is correct to say we are 95% confident that the sample mean lies in the range 4.5 to 4.8. False. Confidence intervals are always about population parameters. We know what the sample mean is and we use it to construct a confidence interval for the population mean. The correct statement is, 
we are 95% confident that the population mean lies in the range 4.5 to 4.8. So how did you do? I hope you paused and thought about the answers as we went along. If you have any questions, put them in the comments below. And do look in the description to links for all my videos about confidence intervals. This video was brought to you by Dr Nick at Creative Maths. Please like this video, subscribe, but most of all join the channel, especially if you are using our videos in your teaching. Help the channel grow and help me help more and more people like you. I am truly grateful for my channel members who help make these videos possible.